Now you ask about the last shot. Well, let, let me go back just a little bit and lead up to that. Uh, one of the reasons that a lot of people remember this, not only because we were such a small school, going against the school that had won more state tournaments than anybody in the state of Indiana, but it was the unusual circumstances of the final game. The score of the final game was 32 to 30. And <clears throat> what most people don't understand, and I didn't until about three years ago, that we had a 15 and a half point winning margin by the time we hit Muncie Central. And we had defeated teams, we scored in the 60s, and but this time, as we had done for two years, we used an offense that they called the cat and mouse. And the cat and mouse was me standing at center court, two guys at the out of bounds line, 10 second line, two guys in the corner. That's a four corner offense that most people thought that Dean Smith invented in the 1970s. We just kind of borrowed it and we used it as an offensive or a defensive weapon. And we had Muncie Central down 22 to 17 at halftime. So we go into our cat and mouse, the four corner. And I had done this before. Uh, we didn't play the third quarter very well. It was the only team in a state tournament in two years that got ahead of us, and we're down 28 to 26 shortly into the fourth quarter. Well, I looked at Marvin Wood and Marvin, our coach, and he's going like this. Well, I knew that meant for me to hold the ball. Now, we're down two points, so I'm over 10-second line, and I stand there for a minute. I look over at Marvin, and he's still going like this. I stood there for four minutes and 15 seconds and were behind 28 to 26 in the most important game of his career. And I facetiously tell people that they asked him after it was over, said, what in the world was in your mind? You got that plump kid standing out there for four minutes and 15 seconds. You're behind two points in the most, and he said, I'm trying to think of something to do. And we get down to the final uh, 48 seconds, tied 30 to 30. They let me stand there till there were 18 seconds to go. And we called timeout, just as in the movie. And here's what happened in the huddle. If you, if you follow the coach's instructions, everything comes out perfectly well. Well, in the huddle, Woody said, okay, here's what we're gonna do. He said, Kraft, the other guard, he said, Kraft, you throw it to Bob, me. He said, Bob, you just dribble around till there are five or six seconds to go, then you can stop and shoot a jump shot, drive all the way. Gene White, our starting center, says, well, if we're going to do that, why don't we get on the left side? We'll click. Woody said, that's a good idea. I said, let's go over it again. He said, Kraft, you take the ball out and throw it to Bob. Guess who took the ball out of bounds? I did. But he got it back to me. And you ask me if I thought anything about the last shot. I'd like to say, uh, you know, I was nervous and it was all built up. When you're coming to that point of the game, you're tired, you're playing two games every day, I actually never thought of anything. If I was smart, I'd have probably missed it because I'd have been thinking too much. But reactions take over. I, I never thought about missing it. I never thought about uh, hitting it. I just knew that he wasn't going to get the ball away from me until I got a shot. And in fact, in the huddle, Woody said, why don't you try and shoot with her three, four seconds to go. In case you miss it, we can get the rebound. That never registered, I mean, I, uh, and it just so happened, there was three seconds to go when the ball went through, and if you look at the film of the Milan Muncie game, we didn't start celebrating, and it wasn't as sophisticated then. They didn't call time. They took the ball out of bounds, threw it in. We went back on defense and are ready for him to come down, and Leon Agalano, who became a good friend of mine, was playing for Muncie. He had the ball at, at three quarters court uh, three quarters the length of the court with the ball on his hand and the buzzer went off, then we celebrated. So I, I honestly can't remember thinking consciously of what I was going to do. I was going to react, I guess, to the defense, uh, what they were going to do. But I, I, I was going to get a shot one way or the other, uh, and, and it wasn't I, I have told people this facetiously. I said, after all, it wasn't very difficult. We were tied. We'd have just gone into overtime. Maybe we didn't want to did. But I didn't think like that at the time. <laughs> That's later. <laughs> uh, so there wasn't there wasn't any magic moment that oh yeah this is this is great this is it. Now when 15,000 people started storming the floor, I figured it was a pretty big deal. Uh, 
but as far as as my thoughts, i honestly can't tell you what i was thinking.